In this video, I explain Swing Transformer paper from ICCP 2021, which improves the performance of Wigeon Transformer by solving the problem of quadratic complexity in memory. So let's just see that in detail. Given the input image, the first thing we need to do is dividing the image into 4x4 patches. And 4x4 patches is much smaller than 16x16 which is used in Vision Transformers. And as you may remember from Vision Transformer video, the reason why we used 16x16 instead of 4x4 is because of the quadratic complexity of self-attention layers in memory. In other words, we do not have any GPU memory nowadays that can contain 4x4 patches. So the others in this paper proposed a very intelligent way to make this quadratic complexity even linear while maintaining the high accuracy, which we are about to see in this video. And anyway, if we just look at this patch partitioning, we can see that it's just a simple tensor reshaping from H times W times 3 to H over 4 times W over 4 times 48. And intuitively, it's like transforming our elements from pixels to patches. And the pixels are having three channels, RGB, but now our patches are having 48 channels. So each patch is 48 dimensional vector, and apparently 48 is not enough. So we have a linear embedding that maps from 48 to C, which is a hyperparameter, which is usually larger, like 96 or 128. And one of the simple ways we can perform this linear embedding is applying fully connected layer that maps every patch in the image into a C-dimensional vector in our final feature volume. But uh, one of the good things about Swing Transformer is that their code is publicly available. So I took a look at their code and I realized that they perform both patch partitioning and linear embedding in a single computation that they call it patch embedding. And in patch embedding, they use a convolution kernel with a 4x4 kernel size and a strike of 4. So each kernel receives a whole patch as our input, and because of a strike 4, they do not have any overlap at all. And they basically produce one element in our feature volume. But of course, it's only producing one channel, and we need C channels. So we need C kernels to compute them. Until now, everything we had is exactly like what we had in Vision Transformers, except that instead of 16x16, 16 16, now we have 4x4 patches. And the main contribution of this paper is proposing a new type of block that they call it Swing Transformer block. Swing stands for Shifted Window, and Swing Transformer block is a multiplication of 2, which is in this case the exact number of 2. And for understanding the reason, well, we have to see what's happening inside. Inside of Swing Transformer block, we have two Transformer blocks that they are exactly like what we know from Transformers, except that instead of multi at self attention layer, at first we have WMSA, which stands for Window Based Multi at Self Attention Layer. And then we have SWMSA, which stands for Shifted Window multi self attention Layer. And after every WMSA, we need to have SWMSA. And because of that, Swing Transformer block should be a multiplication of two. And now let's just see what are these two MSA modules. The first one is very easy to understand. We just need to define what's so-called window which covers a matrix of patches, which is in this case 4x4. And these windows, they do not have any overlap at all. And the reason why we need to define these windows is that assuming that we have a multi self attention layer, instead of giving the whole patches as our input, we can just give the patches within each window as our input and produce our output. And by doing this, we can decrease the memory complexity from quadratic complexity to be linear. And it kind of makes sense, because this pixel at the top left, it doesn't usually have any relationship with this pixel at the bottom right. But of course, we have a problem now. And the problem is, for example, if we have a dog at the center of this image, one part of this dog is located in one window, 
while the rest of the dog is located in other windows and our multi-self attention layer now cannot fully understand what this object is. So to solve this problem, the authors proposed another multi-self attention layer, which they call it shifted window multi-self attention layer. And as the name suggests, we just need to shift the window. And the shift size is half of the window size. So in this case, if the window is 4x4, our shift size should be 2x2. Two two. And we shift it two times to the top and two times to the left, and we have something like this. And now if we have a dog at the center, we can kind of cover it, but it's not efficient, of course, because originally we had four windows and now we have nine windows and our computation is like 2.5 times more. And except the window at the center, all of the windows are having kind of a blank space that as a naive solution we can just zero pad them which is not efficient at all we have many patches now which are which are they are exactly zero and it's completely useless to compute their relationship in multi self attention layer so these zero padded patches is one problem and the second problem is for example if we have a turtle at this location neither WMSA or SWMSA they cannot cover this object and again we have this problem so to solve the first problem the others proposed another way of shifting and instead of shifting the windows we can shift the patches so for example if we just say the original patches is something like this we just need to shift the patches instead of windows and for understanding better how this works, let's just define some areas for ourselves like A, B, C, D that we just want to see where these areas would be after the shifting. So assuming our shifted patches is this, the easiest area is D that if we just shift it to the top and left, it would be some place like here. And the area A, if we shift it two times to the top and two times to the left, it goes outside of the window and it appears from the bottom right. So it's exactly like what we call rolling in programming and we can easily implement it with torch.roll or numpy.roll. And similarly for B and C, this is our area after the shifting. And now that we have the shifted patches, we can define our windows now. And like before, we have some patches within each window that we can pass them through an MSA, which is in this case masked MSA to produce our output. But why masked MSA? Because, for example, if we just look at the second window, we can see that there are some patches that they are adjacent to each other, while in the original patches, they are in different areas and they shouldn't have any relationship it's wrong to compute them in multi-self attention layer. So to avoid that, we define some sort of mass mechanism. And at the end, we shift it back to our original patches, and we have that for the rest of the neural network. And I don't know you, but when I was reading the paper and I saw this mass MSA, I was super excited to see how this mass mechanism works. But since it's an implementation detail, it's not mentioned in this paper, and I just looked their code to realize how this works. At line 222, it looks at the shift size variable, and if it is positive, then it means we are in the shifted window multi self attention layer. So at first, we just look at the input resolution and we put their value in H and W, and we initialize an image mask with torch.zeros. And one at first is the batch size, H and W is the spatial size, and one at the end is the channel size. And the reason why they defined this tensor instead of just simply define H and W is because of this window partitioning function at line 238 that takes a tensor with this shape. But anyway, it's not important. Let's just assume that our H and W are 8. So our initial matrix image mask is something like what we see in the right. 
And next, we define some slices like H slices and W slices. That again, if we just assume our window size is 4 and therefore our shift size is 2, we have these slices that they defined. But to understand how these slices work, we just need to see what they do in this nested for loops. So they defined a count that it is zero, and in this nested for loop, they say image mask of the selected slices should be equal to count, and then they increase the value of count. So if we just test it, we will see that at first, the slices selected is this red window that I show you at the right that we just put the value of count which is zero to them which basically do nothing but after that since the value of count is increased in the next window we put the value of one and in the next window we put the value of two and we do it over and over and over until the end and to be honest, when I looked at this matrix at first, I was kind of baffled because I didn't see why we have this image mask. But then I realized that if I just draw the areas and the windows that I just show you in the previous slide, if you just look at the first window, they're all coming from the area D and therefore they're all having a single number, which is zero. And if we just look at the second window, some of them are coming from the area D and some of them are coming from the area B. And therefore, the, the areas from the purple are having different number than the pale blue one. So these numbers, basically, they say that they are, these patches are coming from different areas within a single window. And for understanding the reason why they are having different numbers, we should see the rest of the code. At line 238, we have window partitioning that takes our image mask as our input plus our window size and produces what they wrote in the comments. So they just produce a tensor that the first dimension is the number of windows, which in our case is 4, and the second and third dimension is window size, that in our case is again 4 by 4. So we have four windows that each window is four by four. And in the next line, we just reshape our tensor into four by 16. So basically we have our windows now, but we flatten every window from four by four to 16. And in the next line, after the first on squeeze, we have a tensor with shape four one sixteen. And after the second is on a squeeze, we have 4161. So if we just take the difference, it's kind of like comparing every single element or every single patch within a window. So if they are coming from different patch, for example, if one of them is one and one of them is two, their difference should be non-zero. And if they are coming from the same patch, for example, if you just compare this patch, which is one, with this patch, which is again one, your difference would be zero. So in line 241, they say if the result is non-zero, then it means they're coming from different mask, we should put the value of negative 100 to their result. And if the difference is zero and they're coming from the same mask, we put the value of zero. But why negative 100 and why zero? We just need to see the formula of the attention layer. As we can see, we have a softmax in this formula, and if we just look at what we have in the softmax, we can see that we just need to add our self-attention mask in this area. So after comparing every patch to another, if we just add the value of negative 100, their results would be much much smaller than the rest. And as we know, for the softmax, if we just give it a value that is very very smaller than the rest, the result would be a value that is very close to zero, because softmax produces a probability distribution, and for small values, the probability is near zero. So it's kind of like performing the math, that if they are coming from different areas within a single window, we just say that the output of softmax is zero, and we do not compute their relationship.
Anyway, this was the solution for the first problem, and now let's just see how they dealt with the turtle problem. For the second problem, they proposed a module that they call it patch merging. And in patch merging, given our input patch, what they do is that they merge the adjacent patches. So initially we have four by four patches and after merging, we have eight by eight patches. And of course, if we just merge four patches together, our channels increases from C to 4C that for decreasing the channel numbers, they added a linear embedding again that maps from 4C to 2C. So it basically means that we just increase the patch size as we go further and further. And by increasing the patch size, then after we performed the window partitioning and shifted window partitioning, then it's more likely to cover the turtle object or any other object that is located in the area. But uh, of course, we might not cover any object in 8x8 eight eight patch size. So we have another swing transformer modules as we go further in the neural network. So initially we start by 4x4, four by four, then we are having 8x8 eight eight patch size, then 16x16 16 16 patch size, and finally 32x32 32 32 patch size. And in 32x32 32 32 patch size, it, we can cover kind of every object that's located in the image. But of course, since we are using 32x32 32 32 patch size, the number of tokens is not so many. So the self-attention layer cannot pay a good amount of attention. And because of that, theoretically, a 4x4 swing transformer cannot perform as good as a 4x4 VIT. But since, anyway, we are using 4x4 patch size at first, we can perform kind of better compared to 16x16 16 16 VIT, which we are about to see later in this video. So anyway, that's the whole idea of the swing transformer, and they just define some sort of stages that we have four stages in swing transformer is always like the same and uh, yeah for image classification we just look at the final output at the last stage and pass it through a linear layer like vision transformer which is just a simple mlp and produces some category scores for our image classification but for object detection and image segmentation we need the output of all the stages so it's like we are having features from different stages with different resolutions and we can just use it as the backbone of the faster rcnn for example and it works perfectly well and the final thing to mention is that we are having four different variants swing tiny swing small swing base and swing large that their difference is in the hyperparameter C, 96, 128, and 192, and the layer numbers, which is this X2, X2, X6, X2 that we can see at the top. If we just need to look at the result, we can see that for the image classification task, the swing transformer performs very well. I mean, comparing to VIT, we can see that the flops is much much smaller while the accuracy is much better compared to VIT and compared to the state of the art CNN which is RegNet Y it again performs better and anyway the only thing we can just see here is the swing transformer is the best it has a very good flops and a very good top one accuracy in ImageNet. And yeah, we can just see the similar result for object detection and image class image segmentation as well, but I'm not going to show you. And the final thing that I want to mention in this video is that if you just remember in Vision Transformers for maintaining the order, we added position embedding. And as we can see, if we just add the position embedding, the accuracy increases from 80.1 to 80.5 but they found that if we just use something else which is relative position bias the accuracy increases to 81.3 but since explaining the relative position bias makes this video too long i explain it in the next video so if you just like this video don't forget to like and subscribe 
and until the next video, goodbye.